what we're going to be looking at here is inventory valuation using the relative sales value method. Now that's based on a lump sum purchase. So what are we talking about here? Say for example you have a timber company. They go out and buy a track of land say from the government and then they log off that land. Say they paid a million dollars for the track of land and then when they log it off they would could they're going to get different prices for the timber that they would get on that land. Say for oak trees, for example, you'd classify them as a certain group here. And they're going to be worth more than pine trees or the lumber that you get out of the pine tree. So this is how you would uh, you would classify. You take this lump sum purchase and then you break it down here by a grouping of some amount here to determine your uh, 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 sales and your cost here on that product. And for our simple example here, we're going to be looking at a, uh, a buying a track of land here and we're going to divide it up into lots. So what we've done here is we bought this track of land and we have broken it up here into different lots. And these lots here have different sales values. They're either larger or smaller or they are a better location. So we, what we do here is we group them here. We in this case, we broke them up into lots A, B, and C, and each has a different sales price here. So what we have to do here is we have to, uh, we have first have to determine the total sales price here. So we would take the quantity that we allocated for the particular group here, say group A, the quantity of lots that we have on group A here, 9, times the sales price for this lot here of $6,000 gives us a so total sales price on those nine lots here of $54,000. So we would do the same here for a our lots classified as B and C. So you determine the total sales amount for each one of those class of or groups of lots here and then you would sum those up here and you're going to get a total amount here of $250,000 for all of the lots that we would have here for sale. Now this is the key here. This is where we come up with this relative sales price here. So what is this relative sales price? Well that's the value of each unit here by allocating the total purchase cost based on the relative sales value here. So let's look at it for item A here, lot A, uh, total sales price was $54,000 here, and then uh, divide that by the total amount here for all the lots of $250,000. So you come up with this relative sales price, this fractional amount here. Uh, 54,000 divided by 250,000 here would be, uh, I'm not sure what the percentage is, but it has a fractional amount here. And then you take that times our your total cost here. In, in this case, our total cost here for those lots, uh, we had um, bought some unimproved land for 110000 and we stuck 60000 improvements into those lots here. So a total cost here was $170,000. So you take this fractional amount here, this relative sales value price here, times the total cost that we have allocated, and just look at for uh, lot A here. We come up with the cost allocated per lot here. Uh, in this case the $36,720. That fraction or that relative sales price, that fractional amount here times the total cost here for lot A gives us our total allocated sales uh, cost here for those lots of $36,720. So that uh, is $36,720. $36,720 is the amount here that we allocated to lot A of this total amount here of $170,000. So the next thing we have to do is calculate our cost per lot here or this cost per group as we could call it here. So uh, this is how we've done that. We take the total sale, uh, total relative sales amount here of $36,720 say for um, uh, group A here or lots A here divide that by the quantity of lot we have number of lots we have for group A here of nine that gives us our uh, four thousand eighty dollars here for the cost per lot here for A and then you would do the same here for B and C just take the total allocated cost here uh, in this case let's look at B here again eighty one thousand six hundred divided by the number of lots here for, uh, that we have holding for B that gives us fifty four hundred and forty dollars per lot same for C here now using this cost per lot or this cost here per group that we have we can determine our cost of goods sold and our gross profit so let's go down and look at that here so again I've broken that down here by year here the quantity of lots sold and let's just look at that here say the beginning of the year here for A we would have nine lots here at the end of the year we had five so we sold four the difference here 
gives us four uh, sold for the year. So take your quantity lots sold here times these costs per lot. Remember the quantity sold here, we had four here for A times the cost per lot. That was the cost that we calculated up here above here. So uh, for A, four times uh, lots here times $4,080 cost per lot gives us a cost here for the lots sold here of $16,320 for the year here. So we do here the same here for B and C. The cost per lot times the quantity of lots sold gives us our cost of lot, our cost of lots sold here, or the cost of the group here sold for the year here. So you just sum up those total amounts here and you can see your cost of goods sold is $106,080. Now, to determine our gross profit, well, we have to take our sales here. We have to determine what our sales here for the year was for each of those groups, A, B, and C. And let's just go look at it here. So sales for the year here, you know, we just take the sales price times the quantity sold here for item A, sales price was 6,000 times four lots sold gives us $24,000. So we've done that. We'll do that here the same for uh, B and C here. So our sales amount here, uh, A here, let's say is $24,000 here, less the cost of the lot that was sold, $16,320, gives us our gross profit here. The difference is $7,680. So the, do the same here for B and C. So our gross profit here, total amount was $49,920. Okay. Now let's go down and let's just determine our, look at our ending inventory, how we could calculate that. So the cost allocated for the lots here, first we start with that, $170,000. So I told you before here, we have track of unimproved land here for $110,000, plus we added the cost here to improve this, this uh, track of land to sell those lots of $60,000. So our total cost here was $170,000 on those lots here. So a uh, cost of our lots sold here, well, $106,080. So we can either go up over here and take that off our calculation up here. That was a total cost of lots sold here at $106,080 here. So we'd be subtracting that here from our cost allocated to the lots here, our total allocated cost here in the lots, and that would give us our ending inventory here. The difference would be our ending inventory here at $63,920. Now we can also go down here and we can look at calculating this ending inventory in another fashion here. So we would take their total cost here, divide that by the total sales. Say our total cost was $170,000 divided by the total sales. That was the total sales amount that we initially calculated for all those lots here of $250,000. So dividing that out, we're going to come up with like 68%, approximately 68% here. So now we would just take the sales here that we had for the year, $156,000 times that percentage here, 68%. So we're going to come up with uh, $106,080 here. So uh, taking uh, $170,000 here, the total co uh, cost allocated to the lots less the $106,080 here, that was our cost of goods sold that we calculated up here. That sales times that 68%. That was our cost of goods sold. Subtracting those amounts, you're going to come up with $63,920. Now let's just go back here and look one at our income statement. Very simple here. Uh, sales for the year, and this is on a yearly basis here, sales for the year was 156000 less our cost of goods sold that we had calculated here at $106,080. Gives us a gross profit here of $49,920. Same amount that we had up above here. And then uh, we have some operating expenses here. I'm just showing, throwing that in here. We had operating expenses here of $36,000. $400 for the year here. So subtracting that from our gross profit here, 49920 gives us net income here of $13,520. So all I want to do is take away from this. We'll just go up it again here and look at it. We have to come up with this relative sales price here. And that was uh, the, really the total sales that we allocated here for um, the price that we assigned for these each of these lots here times the quantity of the lots. And that gave, a, gave us some fractional amount here. And then you take that times the total cost that we have here. Uh, in this case for our lots, this gives us our to a cost allocated to our lots here and then you can determine the cost per lot here simply by taking your allocated cost here divided by the number of lots 
you have here for sale and that gives you your cost per lot that you would allocate here and then going back down here using this cost per lot here times the quantity of lots sold gives you your cost here on the lot sold for each item here subtract out your sales that and then to determine your gross profit here you just take the sales that you had allocated for the year here or sold for the year here times your cost of your lot sold that gives you your gross profit so this is just a going over an example here on using this relative uh, sales value here to determine your uh, uh, cost here and your gross your cost of goods sold here and your gross profit and remember the relative sales here was based on lump sum purchases where you break these things up uh, into uh, uh, different groups here based on their value or their different uh, type of item that it might be